Welcome back to Contextual Electronics. My name is Chris Gamble. Today we're talking about mounting holes and how to include them in your design, but not your bomb. So let's take a look at what we're looking at here. So this is the board that we're using for Contextual Electronics, the ABC course. And this is a design that has a bunch of mounting holes on it, uh, obviously. <laughs> uh, corners for mounting when it's a Raspberry Pi hat, and then the corners of the actual breakout section for when we want to mount a daughter card to it. And so that's something that we're, we're able to do there. And so in both cases, so in the case of the four uh, corners here, we actually don't want that to show up on the bomb. In the case of the, the four mounting po posts here, we actually do want it to show up on the bomb. And so uh, this is something that uh, was asked about on Twitter, like how do you make sure that something shows up in, in, in the design and that it's solid there and that it doesn't show up later in, the, uh, in all of your manufacturing information where it gets really confusing, like what is this thing, why is, you know, it, there's, it doesn't have any part information or anything like that, which would be the case with these four corner holes. So first thing, let's look at what happens when you just add a mounting hole. This is something that I've shown in past videos, I believe. But basically, if you want to just add a mounting hole to your design, you can, I have one saved here, you can just do that here, right? You can just add it to your design. It should show up here as a hole. <laughs> uh, and that's great. The downside of doing it like this and just adding it as a standalone footprint is when you go and update your design, it says, hey, wait a second, that's, that's not supposed to be here. I got rid of it. Okay, so that's fine. We can also, we can get past that by doing something like this. We can go into the the part itself, we can actually lock the footprint. And I've done this for some other elements on the board, like I do that, I usually lock the silk screen elements as well to make sure that when I update it, there's, it should say now, this is a, okay, it's locked, we're gonna keep it there. So even when you update, that's that's great. Other times though, you wanna do this from the beginning, right? So you, you don't want this footprint here, you actually wanna actually add it from the schematic. And we can do that very easily as well, right? We'll just go and copy a new one here. We'll annotate our schematic. And once we're annotated, we should be able to import this into our design. Yeah, where'd it go? Oh, I didn't like that footprint. I've done this once before. We'll go and change this footprint. Yeah, that's from an old library. And so now we should be able to pull this in and that's the same part we had before. Great. Okay. So, um, but this is going to show up on the the bomb, right? Uh, because this is a part that has all the same values that would be in any other schematic component. So, one thing that I do is I basically for every other field that I normally fill in, these are all custom fields that I normally use. I usually add at least for every part I have a link to like a distributor page. I have an MPN. I have a population field, short description and vendor. That's like the very minimum that I like to do when I send the stuff off for manufacturing. I think that's the minimum information you have to make a good looking bomb. Um, so I just make sure that everything's NA. Another thing I do is I list it as DNP. And so this means that even if you use something like the, oops, not that, sorry. If even if we use the traditional bomb export, which is bomb to CSV, and we just export all information, well, we're going to see that this is listed as DNP, and that it's good to go that we, uh, we will definitely have this as a part of the bomb, but it is listed as the DNP, and so any manufacturer should ignore it. The DNP also then uh, I use for Kaibomb, which is my favorite bomb export tool, when I would recommend it. Um, and basically from here, it generates a CSV, but it has much, many more features. So this is the bomb.ini. So if we're in the, the folder here, anytime you use Kaibomb, there's a bomb.ini file. If we open that up, which I have open here. It has a whole range of different options, really, really useful for a different different things. I, you know, so I, I know how to export with, uh, so I like to have my project name and then bomb and then the rev num rev letter rather here. And I think that's really useful to maintain stuff. Uh, and then uh, I also do things like ignore DN DNF, right? So do not fit. So I ignore DNF. And then you also have to list which field is the field for fit field. In this case, it's population. So anything with a DNP, in my case, I use DNP instead of DNF, that it will ignore. If there's anything in there, it says, yep, I should not I should not put this through to the final bomb. So that's another thing, right? So now I have that DNP. It will not show up from there. Then there's also a re regex, right? And so basically, this is regular expressions that are also, some of these are default in Kaibom. And basically, anything that's a solder mount, a solder bridge, 
sorry, a mount, mounting hole, solder bridge, test point, fiducial, anything like that, that will not then get passed through to your bomb as well. And really this is the thing that then prevents anything from coming through. And so it really cleans up your bomb and is really, really nice. And so to use Kai bomb, all we have to do is generate the file here. Oh, I have, I have it open, so let me close this first. Generate. There we go. And now we should see a file been generated. There we go. So this is the latest one. So that's today's date. Okay, I have to import it, the CSV. And now if we look down the, the list here of parts, we see that none of the None of the mounting holes, which are start with H, uh, the reference designator start with H, none of those actually come through. Um, yeah, and so this basically allows us to have a consistent mounting hole. So basically H1 will show up in the schematic. It'll have a reference designator on the associated footprint that shows up in the layout. And then all of the information about that even, you know, if we used Kai bomb, it'll definitely not show up. But if otherwise, if we show, if it, you know, if we use some other bomb export tool, we'll still be able to see that, hey, this should not be populated because the population field is in there. Mounting holes are really critical to make sure that you have a solid connection between your board and any case that you might have in, uh, you know, that you might be using it with. Maybe you're 3D printing your own case, maybe using it off the shelf, like a Hammond case, something like that. Um, but it's a great practice to have any circuit board you have. You just start to, you know, square board, put a, a mounting hole in all four corners. Uh, you know, super, super small boards like the getting into Blinky, you might not want to do that. But anything bigger than that, you probably want to add some mounting holes just to really start to standardize and have an easy way to hold it down. If not to a case, maybe just your bench. So if you have other questions about mounting holes and your manufacturing stuff, you can ask down in the comments below. This is part of what the board you're seeing here is the advanced bleed cell board. This is part of the ABC course that we have. We show you how to build everything from this with this from start to finish, all the way up through manufacturing and coding. And it's ongoing because we're still developing with it. Uh, you can go and sign up for there. There's a free week of contextual electronics. So if you're interested in that sort of thing, you can uh, get a free week of contextual electronics with that on your risk. Cancel any time uh, just to try it out, see if you like it. Go and watch as many videos in the ABC course as you like. There are a lot. <laughs> uh, lots of other content on contextual electronics course as well. So check that out. Uh, we also have a free forum and uh, podcast. So please, all those things, please check them out. And we'll see you in the next video.